Hi again. Uh, the subject is still boats, and having painted a canoe, I thought we shouldn't leave sailboats out. And so I've found this scene really simple, and uh, we're going to transform this into a slightly more complex painting, but uh, still remaining simple. And so a few parts. A sailboat at anchor. We're going to add a couple of friends sailboats into the scene, some other things. One of the things to be sure is that the sailboat in the scene needs to be as strong enough to hold the attention. Notice that it's at least occupying something close to half of the space. So we don't want a huge scene with a small sailboat. And uh, we've accomplished that by just recognizing that fact. I've drawn a straight line. I use the edge of my paper here and, and uh, put the boat in and then estimated the sails proportionally to what I've seen from the scene. At the one-third mark, I put in what could be the horizon. And so we have one-third, two-thirds, a boat. I've added a new boat, one-third the height of that boat, with a sail, off in the distance, and three other boats way off there in sailing mode with, a, with their sails tipped. Some, three in fact, post out of the water with some ropes. Those will all come later. But the first thing is to claim the paper. But before doing so, having drawn the scene, you want to again use your kneaded eraser to lift any loose graphite on the surface, still allowing yourself to see the sketch underneath. In this case, we'll start with the lightest paint and something in the pink and the yellow mode, light yellow, or the June Brilliant mode. And we'll use a, besides the paper being sizable, we'll use a sizable brush. And we're going to clean the brush and make sure that it doesn't produce green. And get some lighter yellow into the scene, which will be among the lighter colors. And just a little bit of June Brilliant as well. And we'll check that on our test strips. Medium value change it medium value so we're going to end up wetting everything but the boat the two the three boats so around we go the post we won't worry about because they'll become darker later but we want to keep the boat and the sail <clears throat> dry so I have to know where they are put medium pressure and go around the sail so horizon, in this case sky and water at the same time, are being wet. Turning the paper so I can be accurate with just the placement of the water around the drawn boat. Any place we uh, place the water will end up around a smaller boat. We'll end up having paint go and lose the boat. So maintaining white means keeping it dry for at least now. And between the two posts, let's keep the post dry as well. And off around we go. And keep a little bit of dryness on the horizon around those boats. As you can see, you don't have to be especially careful. If it's in the distance, it can be a little fuzzier. So we essentially have a wet paper, and we have our colors mixed, yellow and June Brilliant. I'm going to brighten up the yellow just a bit. I'm going to have the darker yellow in the foreground between the post and around the post. Without adding more paint, I'm going to add just a little more a bit of June Brilliant, and we're going to go around. the boat. We're going to add more color near the boat for interest and bring a little bit of that June Brilliant down into the yellow previously done and work lighter to the horizon. If too dark we can lift lightly with the paper towel. Sticking with the June Brilliant we're going to add a bit more in to this side back to the yellow fill in the corner dark yellow at the bottom and lighter as we go to the horizon 
and June Brilliant, just adding a touch in, especially near the boats. So it moves to warmer at the horizon. I'm going to add, in addition to the clouds we've seen on this original sketch, some brighter color at the horizon line and around those little guys and around this boat. So we're creating some tangency. Back to yellow, we're alternating, and then we're going to take some of that color away. So it's really hugging the horizon line, a little bit going across the boat, and leaving the boat essentially white. At the very top, we're going to go back to yellow, dark at the top, a little bit of pink or in, um, June Brilliant, moving in. Not a lot more than that. The top stays. So this stays lighter. We're going to be moving now. To lighten some of this, I recommend something approaching surgical tactics. Touching, turning, touching, lifting. So if it's too continuous, a tone, especially when we want it to be fading to white, we can lift parts of it. So it has a modulation, but very subtle. And we're going to reinforce that horizon line one more time with some more brilliant. Next step, moving towards the, the blue paints. We have our cobalt blue. We're going to start in the upper corner, taking that corner out. The paper is still wet, so as you can see, we're moving pretty quickly. We're going to go around the boat and the sail and up we go and we're going to work on the edges because it's damp we'll keep that wedge edge wet we want to make sure we keep this edge wet so it doesn't set up and become a line which is a different more difficult thing to eliminate now we're moving to a different color. We have on here also something called peacock blue, which is a bit brighter. So I'm going to move that into the scene. Move towards the peacock here. And you can see it's quite bright. I'm going to go back to the cobalt, go into the peacock, tone it down just a bit, and into the peacock and tone it down just a bit and move our way across. So this is going to be like a sea fog that we've seen on the original sketch. It's going to have multiple colors of blue. And we're working our way down into the yellow. And it gets lighter as it comes down. And at some point there will be no color. If I go into the sail, dry it, go back and reinstate the edge. Turn it to my advantage. Change the blue from cobalt to a cobalt cerulean mix. Move our way down into that zone. Because it's damp, we're not setting up lines at this edge. And we're going to go all the way across and create a ground fog situation which is a little more darker all the way across and around this sailboat. The bottom edge gets softened, smudges into the lighter zone, no edges. We're working our way back to the corner. We're going to leave some lighter color up in the upper corner. So we're working our way across with less paint down to the side of the brush and because it's gotten a little damp we're adding that paint back to the cerulean and we'll darken just a bit around the tip of that sail and Tease it just a bit, and 
dance it. So we're ending up with a lighter corner and a lighter horizon. We have one thing to do with the blues yet, that is to darken off another corner or two so it isn't uniform. We're taking some of that blue from the sky and putting it down into this scene around the post and because it's still damp and it's done very lightly we are modulating the edge in I'm going to call this feathering the edge and reinforcing the edge around the post so they come forward and perhaps just a bit more color in that zone. We've maintained this business of darker to almost white at the horizon. Just a little bit of color in there. But our eye makes up for the remainder. So then we'll move to drying and then I'll come back in a minute. So we'll begin again um, having dried it. I'm going to reinforce the horizon a bit by going around those little guys that are his friends out there that are sailing. One of them is smaller. There are three of them. And one is smaller than the others. But it's just essentially the white sails that we're wanting to see. So we'll reinforce those guys. And we have to, again, get rid of the edges. So I'm turning it to my advantage. That edge wants to go away. I'm working very carefully just at the edge. And if there's not quite enough paint, we'll drop it just a bit more in. And we'll reinforce the horizon with a darker line right there. And get rid of the edge. And surgically lighten, lighten. So there's a little sailboats out there. Our eyes will make up the imagination of them. Working our way around. We'll go back to cobalt or something. No, we're going to go back something that goes into the cobalt. And the edges have to disappear. Okay. A little bit too dark. So we'll lift some of that color. Because it doesn't want to be coming forward too much. So all about values. And lighter as you go further away. This boat is so far away we use the smallest little brush. We're going for something for a darker stem. So we're going to, to uh, check, make sure that it's working. It's not working. And we need to get Uh, thin lines. It's a little thicker than I'd like, so I'm going to resort to the rigger. And this is the you know, one inch brush that's got a very thin point. It's also called a liner or script brush. We don't want to be too dark because this doesn't want to be black, so it's in the brown family. And we're going to end up putting A, a mast on this boat. It's got to be straight and it doesn't have to be continuous. At that distance it can disappear some. We're going to end up borrowing the blue of the sky and putting a little bit of blue on the boat and with a clean paper towel lifting the blue so it's lighter. It goes across the bottom and the back of the boat and we're going to drop the mast in. And at that distance, one need not have a lot, but on the water, we can drop the mast and a little bit of the 
boat. So we have enough of a boat, and then we're going to do a little bit with the sail. A couple of things. We're going to do a, make sure we maintain a credible line, a little line, or a spar or two. And we'll do a couple of lines, and good enough for that boat. We're going to do the same thing. Borrowing from our image earlier, we're going to do the dark part surrounding the boat. Back we go to blue, or maybe we'll do red in this case. Let's see. Go to Elizabeth Kimson. Let's make it a red boat. We're going to add a little blue. Cobalt especially, to part of that edge. So we're going to make sure this is horizontal. As it meets. Okay. We have a chance to do some additional things in the boat. But let's go first to the mast. Pull that up and do a little bit with adding a person to the boat. So we're just going to do persons, a head and a shoulder. Persons up there. And looking for dark paint. Making it darker by mixing a couple. And down we go with the with the mast. If I run my hand down the edge of my paper, conveniently, I can create a pretty straight line. Again, it can be a little more continuous, or we can turn it for a greater security and do it in small sections. We're going to do little things across it on occasion, and we're going to have some of it get a little darker by using indigo and extending past the white piece that happens to be there. And down we come with a bit of indigo and a bit of whatever. Now, straight down from there, we can add the mass piece. And we want to go a little further into the boat. This also will have some extra pieces going on. And the possibility of a front sail being surrounded by other color. So we're doing some negative painting all of a sudden again around the sail and we're adding interest to the sail done lightly so there's an edge we can reinforce that edge by separating the parts of the sail going to a little blue putting that in so it goes from blue to red down the stem of the sail we're claiming it leaving it mostly white next to the stem a little bit lighten if needed and this guy as well just a little bit of color to suggest it is not pure white okay the interior of the of the boat is next and we are seeing a couple of things so we can put a person in this person doesn't have to be quite as dark because they're closer to us but we use some indigo and some brown and shoulders and a head and maybe an arm. Remember, heads are oval in the vertical. They're not a circle. We all have oval heads. We can add other pieces to the boat just by filling it in with little bands of color.
and lighter than the person. So it starts to look like the boat. We'll darken that guy. We have to ultimately anchor this boat to the water by putting some additional shadows around it. So this line needs to be softened by having some shadows. So as it touches the water, it's not a sharp line. And we can begin to see the shadows working around the edge of the boat. And if we're looking at the subject, if we don't have quite enough clues, that boat's anchored, that one's anchored, this one's now anchored. We might want a couple of lines on the boat. And in a hit-go-hit fashion, a little bit of darkness on a key piece or two. We'll put some name on the boat. Put some additional pieces on the boat. They end up on the water as well. And one last thing is to reinforce the post. The light is coming from the back side, and this is more in shadow. So the darker side of the post will be here. Darker side, darker side, darker side. Clean the brush, soften the edge so it's lighter. We have a clear top, and there's a little top to the post. And we can have some lines moving into the water. And those guys, not too busy, it's a good idea. Let's make this horizontal. And just a little bit of horizontal. Clean up that line there. There we go. We'll make that a little softer. So we have our boat anchored, water. So let's put a hair dryer on it. Obviously, this is done rather quickly, but it's more or less to illustrate the idea of how one goes at this. And uh, if you take just a bit more time, it could even be more compelling. I'm noticing just one thing that is, that we have a little bit of a water bubble here. So I'm going to work just on that edge to take it away so we don't steal from our boats down below. And I'm going to add just a little bit of additional blue because so I want to see those boats just a bit stronger. Just at the bottom, right there. Three boats, all in sail, beautifully on the horizon. And let's put a mat on. It always looks better with a mat. There we go. So rather simple sailboat scene. And leading it in, it's got perspective. It's got dynamics with movement. Additional anchoring to the land. The, the, the focus is concentrated by having a grouping of three things that move around. And light that comes into the scene. A little bit more of the horizon than previously shown. Heading into a better day. Being in love with the subject of a boat, so I have uh, the proposition of doing just one more in a silhouette kind of form. In this scene, we notice that the boat, the canoe, is really uh, dark with very little detail. The whole scene is dark, and the light part of the scene is the sunset. So we're going to see if we can capture some of that quality in this, uh, this next painting. And it's not unlike this one, which we did recently, where we have... The canoe in silhouette along with the person and the land fishing and an, uh, an evening kind of situation. We'll do it again, but notice the similarity of dark to light at the horizon between the two. So 
Let's see if we can do a sunset version of canoe. Uh, I'm going to divide this by a third and make sure the canoe gets in this zone. And using this as a starting place, I will look at the one third position and place the canoe here. So I'm going to end up showing you how to get this canoe smaller onto this piece of paper. So what I'm doing currently then is drawing a rectangle that touches all parts of the canoe and includes it all. And I know this is not a square because it's longer. So let's take that dimension with my pencil, make it a square. What I find is if I divide that in half, this is about almost one and a half rectangles. So what I'm going to do for the canoe at a smaller scale is draw my square in this place at the size I want it to claim the paper. That's a square. And I'm going to take half of the square and add it to the square. Then within that zone, I'm going to draw the canoe as I see it on the other larger scene. So, and then two, and around we go. So, and essentially we reduce the scale of that by half, just by a proportion with that system. Rectangle, carve a square, equal sides, add its one and a half squares, make it one and a half squares, and then draw within that envelope of space. There's our envelope. Now we can erase the rectangle. And we have our canoe. And that's your system whenever you want to move something from the outside. You can do it from paper pretty easily, but you can do it outside by stretching your arm and locking your elbow, making the square, and transforming anything from the big world in proportion to your paper. Next step will be a horizon line. In this case, I'm going to make it lower I think and so the canoe is sticking in past the horizon line and we're going to have it on the ground plane so we're going to it's going to be sitting on the land again dynamic and going to pass the horizon we'll make the sunset uh, dynamic and we won't we'll have an open piece past and if the canoe is dark I don't want the back to be dark so I'm going to stop the trees in the background here divide this into thirds and maybe slightly less create the tree zone we're going to do another little piece of tree zone so there's our lake here's our canoe here's our land Canoes in proportion. Again, what we do is lift the loose graphite so we can see the marks underneath, but so they aren't so prominent. That's mainly done by tapping and again shifting so that the eraser gets lighter. So the next step is to create a sunset with sunset colors. And I've got yellow and red and uh, June Brilliance, so that should do the trick. And I'm going to do that for the whole scene. We're going to make it a sunset scene. Then, except for, well, we'll do the boat as well. We'll do everything. Except the water, we'll do second. So we'll do the sky first and the trees. Go to that line, don't push too hard. Honor the horizon line. We're going to go around the boat and fill it in with water. Okay. Now while it's drying and setting a bit, I'm going to do some alizarin crimson. 
Getting color on the painting already, so it's becoming sunset. I'm going to add some alizarin crimson to the June Brilliant for another color. I'm going to clean the brush, have some yellow, and I'm going to bring some crimson over at a part of that to create kind of an orange. So we have at least four reds. And we're going to start with something closer to pure yellow at the horizon. And that water. And back to our paper towel. Lift and clean one is a good idea when you're working with pure colors. And we're going to lift some of that color or blend it off into the upper seam. Then we're going to move to up the ante with reds and oranges. So in the, this zone near the horizon, we're going to do fairly long bands and they're not touching. And we're going to extend them so there's some brighter and some less bright versions in that zone. And the upper scenes will move towards the pure crimson. We'll start quite dark. We'll add some blue. And back to the crimson. And we move down into the yellow so it's changing a bit. And we don't want to forget our June Brilliant being added into the scene. A little bit of additional color needed here. And we take a look at our sky. That's getting close to a sunset quality. Okay. We can take a risk and dry this just a little bit, starting at 18 inches. And that was opportunity a little bit. Going to the mid-sized brush. So we have that a bit dry. And we're going to take a look at our sunset. We can add just a bit of additional darkness. I've dried it just a bit now. So where it's already darker, I'm going to add. It needs to be not so watery. And and it needs to be a bit purpley. But we can add just a bit. It's still, as you can see, a bit damp. So we end up with soft edges and additional darkness. And so that the range from dark to light, which is what we're always doing, is happening. And I'm getting lighter and smaller and thinner and closer together. Taking paint off so it's less prominent. And then we can dry the remainder of the, the sky part of the sunset. And we may have to do a little more with that, but not for a while. Next step is to color the land and water. And so that's done by the same colors. And on the water, the land wants to be darker, so we won't put so much water on the land. And we're going to go right, in this case, over the boat the boat doesn't exist because this is a silhouette painting less less water on the land dark paint starting with the dark crimson same thing as above pushing towards a lighter horizon if we were really good we'd get some of the yellow going already near the horizon and work our way in Getting some of our Elizabeth Crimson or um, June Brilliant moving in. Going right over the boat, leaving some of the internal maybe white and light. And so back we go, creating mid ranges in the reds, not quite as bright as the bottom. Some of this can get even darker. And that will happen with the land in just a minute and the boat. Okay. 
So we have the land all red and the water. Now we want to get some thin lines. The little white line there we want to have go away and we want to lift but we need to use a clean paper towel at that position. So it goes to white, dark to white. Okay. Without drying it, I'm going to move into some of the darker browns and blacks or indigos. This is the land now, and so we're going to do that with a fairly soft edge. And this is heavy cream, dark paint, over the top. We're going to, for the moment, go around the canoe, but that won't be for long. And we have the land ending about here. Well, we're going to go a little further, just a bit further. So it blends off, and around we go. Back to heavy cream, indigo, this whole back edge, quite dark. While we're at it, we're going to work on the trees on the horizon in the background. But remember, these guys don't want to be t quite as dark as the foreground. We'll work and see if we can accomplish that. We can add red into it, because that's part of the scene. And... We can go lighter towards the outside edge. Those edges want to be quite soft, so I'm just teasing those edges. And a little piece over here. Back to our dark. And if it's too dark, which I'm suspecting it is, in a moment we will lighten that. The best way to soften those upper edges, pretty critical, is just use a very point of the brush. Just tease those edges so they're not quite so crisp. Softening the edges, especially in a situation where trees touch a horizon. They don't want to be as sharp as the things that are in front of you. So I think you're getting a sense of that. This ends up being one color for too long. So we're going to drop in a cluster of color so it moves on us. And if that's a little too dark, which I think it is, the surgical tool comes back and we can lift some to make it look more believable. Okay. We can put a few branches of the trees in there should we want it eventually. But we're getting to where we need to be. Note that in our scene, the boat is quite dark. The rails are left reddish. So I think we're going to paint around the crossbars and the rails, but other things will be quite dark. Done with a small brush, a medium brush. We're going to go for, we're going to first dry the painting. And we're going now towards our indigo, very dark paint, but we're going to leave the rail, the upper rail, and we're going to do a section of the boat at a time. This is the moment to be quite careful. Coming down the, the front of the boat, there's a little bit of a board. We're going to leave that, a little piece of metal. And we're going to move this out, and it becomes a triangle. It comes right to a point. 
So it's important that it be pointy. And that we get the shape of the boat first, then we'll meld it. We're turning it always to our advantage, getting the paint near us, pulling the water near us, being careful, tripoding our hands so we don't it doesn't move on us. And creating a point again. So we're beginning to get the shape of the canoe. Then we're going to work inside of the canoe. To protect that line, I have to turn it as I've just done. So that the upper edge is visible. I'm using the pencil hold with the brush and delivering the paint and making sure that we follow the line of the edge and then we can be messy after that. We're creating this little necklace. We have this band going across. We're going to keep him light as well for now. And we're going to go past him and do another band. The time to be careful, slow, and accurate. I have to tell myself that. It's too easy to get excited and rush when accuracy is more critical. So we'll have a few things to do with the boat to get it to fit in it, into its surroundings. But we're heading in the right direction here. So we have, for the moment, these pointy little guys. That. So the next step is to get this to meld into the ground plane. So we're doing the crazy wild strokes. This edge disappears. It kind of melds in to the scene. And we're creating these crazy guys, bringing, enlisting the support of the rigor for grass-like effects and grass-like effects, grass and silhouette. We're going to end up with some additional grass, a little smaller in scale up there. And so we're doing strokes that are grass-like. We seem to be fond of grass today. And we'll darken some part with a crazy wild stroke. Then, this is an amoeba. We're softening the edges of the amoeba. And we're moving into grass. You've got to make sure they're not too thick. And we're pulling to thinner. They're not all the same length. It's not all consistent. And they get lighter as they move over. And so they're focusing on the boat. But essentially, we're getting heading there. Moving back to the red, we're going to reinstate the sunset on the rails of the boat. It's important to have this rail darker than the water around it. And go to a different red or interest. If there's two red, we can solve that in a minute. But they're not being left white. And we're going to go up to the tip. Have it stick up into the sunset and position it so we got the best chance of remaining accurate with the boat. For a fast sketch, it's pretty good. We still have a bit more to go. We're going to get rid of some of that edge, tying the canoe a little further into the land. You can begin to see the red coming through and 
We're going to darken up a few of those guys. Add just preferably with brown or slightly lighter, not the dark. Some just branches. A few tree trunks in the back to give an indication of what it is. If it goes too big and we don't know what it is or aren't quite sure, it causes perplexin perplexity. So a couple of them are darker. Again, as earlier, along the horizon line, an opportunity to be just a bit darker. And if it's fussy and mussy, water, clean paper towel, cleans it back up, and that may be what I wanted to do for this scene. We're going to go back to the mat and say it doesn't have to be complex to have interest. You can imagine putting a couple of birds in. Let's do that. We'll do that again to reinforce the focus of the painting. And a little small one at a distance. And there's always three. There we go. And if one is closer, it has a legitimate right to be darker. And longer. Longer. Got to make sure it's... We'll lift. There we go. So, simple little scene in silhouette, a sunset. Or we could fuss with it a bit more and add more brightness to the sky. So, boats are a critical, fun thing to do. And uh, uh, they can be simple and complex. They can be in silhouette. They can be celebrated. They can be sailboats. They can be light and dark. And uh, the landscapes around them, because it's water, are pretty well known to us and can be pretty simple. So enjoy painting boats.